So a summary video on concepts that we've learned about with regards to thermodynamics. Now, when you hear the term thermodynamics, I want you to think about two things. I want you to think about weather, and when we talk about weather, we're gonna talk about anything we'll highlight in green there, but also I want you to think about how much because when we think about thermodynamics, we're going to be thinking about concepts of whether a process or a chemical reaction occurs and then how much product we make, okay? So um, questions to think about with regards to this process have to do with exo or endothermicity, when we think about order in a reaction, and then we think about spontaneity. So we're gonna kind of build on sort of this uh, sheet here as we think about all of this. So when you think about whether or not a process is exothermic or endothermic, you're really talking about enthalpy. And we abbreviate enthalpy with the letter H. And when you think about enthalpy, I want you to think about bonds, intermolecular forces, and interactions. So think about bonds, intermolecular forces and interactions. Now, a favorable process from an enthalpy standpoint is exothermic. So a favorable process from an enthalpy standpoint is going to be exothermic and an exothermic process is going to have a negative delta H. So that's going to be exothermic and in that case, we want to think about heat being generated. So heat is going to be a product. So just putting over here, if delta H is positive, that's an endothermic process, okay? And in that case, we can put heat or think about heat as being a reactant, okay? So when we ask the question about a process, about whether the process generates more or less order in our system, then we're talking about entropy. Entropy has the letter S, and I want you to think about two phrases. I want you to think about disorder, but I also want you to think about the phrase, more molecules moving more. So when we think about a favorable process from an entropy standpoint, delta S will be defined as positive. And I'll talk about delta in, in, in just a minute here, but anytime you see delta, you wanna think about a final state minus initial state. Delta is final minus initial, final minus initial. And so if we think about the energies of these, what that means from an enthalpy standpoint, the fact that a favorable process is negative, that must mean that the enthalpy of the products is less than that of the reactants. So that final minus initial, smaller number minus larger number ends up being negative. So when we think about the favorability from an entropy standpoint, that must mean that the energetic entropy is larger for our um, products, meaning that we've become more disordered. We've had, we've had more molecules moving more. So when we think about the spontaneity of a process, really we're sort of asking the question, does this process go downhill? And this will make more sense if you watch the video that we're going to have on reaction coordinates, but spontaneous processes, processes that are, are favorable, are ones that go downhill energetically. Okay, so to think about this, we're really going to be talking about free energy. Specifically, we refer to this as Gibbs free energy, and we use the letter G to describe Gibbs free energy. So a favorable process from that standpoint is going to have a delta G that is negative. So favorable processes have negative delta G values. Okay. So how do we kind of put this all together? Well, the weather equation that we're going to think about is this one, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. And that's an equation that I need you to know. So when we think about the weather process, whether a process occurs has to do with its spontaneity. So a favorable process is going to have a negative delta G. So when we ask whether a process occurs, you wanna ask the question, is delta G negative? So when we think about the contributions to delta G, delta G has two components to it. It has the enthalpy component 
and the entropy component, as we'll see with our equation here, has a temperature dependence. Okay, so if we want a win-win situation, we're going to have a uh, situation where we're going to have a exothermic reaction that is becoming more disordered. And mathematically, we can kind of see that this will make sense. If delta H is negative, so I take a negative number, and I'm going to subtract something that's positive, knowing that temperature is always in Kelvin, so that's always going to be a positive temperature value. So negative minus something that's positive is always going to be making it more negative. There's no way that process can't be spontaneous. Taking the flip side of it, if we have a lose-lose situation, that's an endothermic process. So delta H is positive, that's becoming more ordered, so entropy is negative. I take a value that is positive and I subtract something that's negative, I'm adding a positive to that. There's no way that that process won't have a positive delta G. That process will never be spontaneous. And then we have sort of the win-lose combinations, a situation where maybe entropy is helping us, but enthalpy is hurting us. In that case, there's going to be a temperature dependence. See if this makes sense just looking at this chemical, this equation that we have here. So if we've got a win situation with our enthalpy, meaning that delta H is negative, but we've got an unfavorable entropy, meaning entropy is also negative. So subtracting a negative value here means we're going to be adding something positive to our helpful negative enthalpy. If that's the case, we want to diminish that unfavorable contribution from enthalpy, so we would want to decrease our temperature here so that that entropy contribution is minimized. The flip side is true. If entropy is what's helping us and enthalpy is the unfavorable component to spontaneity, then we want to increase our temperature and make that entropy contribution more mathematically significant. So how does this all then kind of uh, sum up with this weather equation is we've got the win-win, lose-lose, and then two temperature-dependent win-lose combinations. Okay, so that answers the thermodynamic piece of whether a process happens. How does this tie together with the how much piece? Well, that brings in the second equation that I need you to know that has to do with delta G. So delta G equals minus RT ln of K is the equation that's going to allow us to think about uh, how much product we make. Remembering that an equilibrium constant, right, is a ratio of products over reactants. So that's quantities of species. So how much product is produced, that how much really has to do with our equilibrium constant. That equilibrium constant K, and K is really products over reactants. And so quantifiable species that allow us to take a thermodynamic parameter such as free energy and relate it to amounts of products and reactants that we have. Just one last piece to highlight here, when we're talking about thermodynamics and we're talking about whether a process occurs and how much product we make, one of the things that I have not talked about is speed or how fast a process occurs. How fast a process occurs is kinetics. We're going to see though how kinetics and equilibrium come together when we talk about a reaction coordinate. So make sure to watch that video if you want to see how these pieces come together.